Hey, what's up, everybody? Who we got? I see all the waves. What's up? How's everybody doing? Yo, who took who else took an L on the sneakers out today on those dunks? I stayed taking L's on that. What's up? Same? You all took L's? Yeah, I took an L too. Yeah, Jordans don't really look good. I mean, Jordans look good. What's up? What's up, them 12s? Took a big L on those too, bro. I'm a size 14, man. Yo, y'all don't know the L's I've been taking since I was a kid. <laughs> so I'm a size twerk. Yeah, nah, negative. What's up? So yeah, I appreciate you guys tuning in again to another episode of Community of Voices. If you don't know, my name is Omar. I'm a uh, senior cultural partnership strategist for Finish Line. Um, yeah, so now we got a special guest. We got the boy John Wall. Cop those who need 12 off restock. I see you. I'm happy for you guys getting the W's. The 12s is fire. I really need those dunks though. Really need those dunks. 320 website wouldn't let me in yo i'm telling you guys we see, we see the comments about the website yo we working on it we working on it you know code is like a whole new language so you know it's, it's gonna be tough but they definitely behind the scenes working on that website to you know improve that experience so we hear y'all we see y'all in the comments so uh, yeah Let me see where you at. No request. Size 13. Yeah, what else y'all looking forward to? Giveaway. Rally in here, I see you. Yeah. What else? Ten and a half. Restock. Who knows? Who knows? Put that damn reward system. Yeah, we working, man. Nothing's perfect, but we working behind the scenes. We see all the comments, so we working on it. What else? Fours. You know we don't got no all five fours. All five fours are fire though. I'm gonna say that. They fire. Yo. What's up? Let me see. Maybe this is him in here. Hold on. Let me, let me text the boy John real quick. There we go. Alright, cool. I just texted John. He's coming in right now. Damn, that's crazy. How you get banned on finish line? What you did? Who am I? I'm the senior cultural partnership strategist for finish line. Kicks in my collection. We, we, could, we could do that. We could do that. I got to get back with the team. Jordan one Tokyo. Those are fire too. All silver. Show us some kicks. Nah, we're gonna do that another week. That's finish on this live. There he go. I'm about to come in right now. You? What's good, Oski? <laughs> Yo, what's good, Pop? <laughs> hey, Jim, hold on. Let me get this joint straight. Hold on. I got you. What you up to? Hey, man, just finishing the work day. Just knock out this interview with you real quick. You know. Okay. I got I got my yoga mat, so I'm definitely got to stretch those hip out, hips out, get those abs right. Feel me? I hate <laughs> yoga, bro. <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure they're doing this straight. Hold on. Yeah. Did you have workouts earlier? Yeah, man. I had workouts. And I just had to go do this little... um. 
This Dexter scan, you probably never heard mm-hmm. of. You probably heard of it before, right? No, nah, I don't think so. It's like it's like this drink where you gotta um like see like your um in body, like what your in body is, like fat wise and stuff, like where you mm-hmm. store fat at and like check your bones and all that. Like the team wanted me to do that, so I had to go do that. Yeah. See what your yeah. body fat percentage is and all that. But it's like it's not really gonna be realistic with your body fat because um they ain't gonna be uh, realistic with it because um they check like your bones and all that you know what I mean so it ain't gotcha. gonna be like all the way up to date like mm-hmm. the way it posed to but it was dope it was cool some something to get done you know what I mean right just trying to do whatever I supposed to do to get you back to plain stay shape healthy stay right yeah I got workouts tonight at seven though all right so I work out every night at seven cool so, cool. Uh, you back in Denver, right? Yeah, I'm still in Denver. Quick you just got back, though, right? Again. Yeah, I just got back. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I should be ready now. Yeah, I should be ready. Are you good? Yeah, I'm straight. Cool. So take me through how you was drafted 10 years ago by the Wizards. Take me through how you've seen that uh, D.C. community develop. Or improve rather over those over that decade. Um, you know, what I mean, just being drafted there to start off like that, just getting drafted there was dope for me. You know, what I mean, like, uh, my dad was like around, born and raised around that area. So you know, what mm-hmm. I mean, for my dad to pass when I was nine, and then to um, be like, okay, you know, like everybody was like, the Nets supposed to be getting number one pick because they had the worst record at the time. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, maybe I'll be in New Jersey, or maybe I'll be in D.C. End up being in D.C. So that was dope for me. It was great, but um. From just day one, you know what I mean? Just the D.C. community has always embraced me and supported me. Right. I mean, it's been 10 years that it allowed me to uh, – for 10 years for me being there, just allowing me to see how the community – the community organization, such as, like, Bright Beginning, something that I have uh, made a donation to, has grown so much and to help uh, more families and children in need. I mean, that's the, the way I've seen it in the last 10 years. And, I mean, now our team, you know, we live in – we practice in Ward 8, Southeast D.C., yeah. So, like, I get to look at everything that goes on there constantly throughout the day of, like, how families or kids or just people in that environment are less fortunate. And kind of how I grew up, I know how that, that is. And, um, you know, I mean, just, you know, the, the pan- obviously, you know, having the pandemic happen has hurt everybody in the world. Like, we never thought Facts. we got to be on standstill for anything. Like, if I want to go, if you're somebody that likes to chill in the house and want to step outside, you can step outside. Now, we didn't have that opportunity in the first three or four months. Mm-hmm. And when we did, we had to wear a mask. You know what I mean? And I know it hurt those people a lot more being uh, where we practice at, seeing Ward yeah. 8, because um, it's so many families that's families like the moms and dad that's, that do everything they can to try to put food and have a roof over those kids' head. But that's a mm-hmm. part of the city and a part of the town that always get overlooked. So I try to touch every aspect of D.C. if I can, because I've been there for 10 years going on 11, but just to be over there the last three, four years and seeing how they deal with it, it's, it's a lot more tough. So that's how I've seen the embrace of how the D.C. community has grown and how I, how I have had the opportunity to also help in that aspect. Right. And then we'll get into your foundation a little later, just like the impact and the things you've been doing recently with it. So how would you say, like, what are the some of the issues facing that black and brown community within D.C. from your experience being there? Um. I guess it's been, it's not, it hasn't been that bad, but to be honest, I don't think it's really too many challenges, you know what I mean, for black mm-hmm. and brown communities. Um, I don't think it's no much more different than people in Florida, people in New York, or people in North Carolina where I was born and raised. Right. Um, I think to be all realistic with all of it, I think it's all about how we come together and how we try to improve the obstacles that we're facing right now. Like, we all know we've been dealing with this, and our parents and our grandparents have been dealing with, with this our whole lives. Mm-hmm. And for us to kind of be like us, we probably like was in elementary, middle school, high school, and you kind of see a little bit of things. But now I think it's on the top of the chart because we have social, like I tell people now, we have social media and camera phones. Right. And without those two identities, I don't think we would see like the things that's happening to George Floyd or happening to Breonna Taylor. We wouldn't be able to see the awareness of that because it'd be mm-hmm. something that just goes, wipes right under the rug again. And now that we have to use that, like me, I have an opportunity to use my platform. I'm an NBA player that's on a high level, and a lot of people look up to me, and I'm a role model to a lot of people. 
Yeah. So I try to use my platform as much as possible. But in D.C., you, you see it and hear from from time to time. But I, I don't think it's no different than any other place. It's just about is people recording or, 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 or is people uh, reporting as much as they should. Yeah, with the camera phones and all that, like nothing's yeah, like missed it, now. It, Everything's out there. N- nothing's never missed, man. And you know what I mean? I think the most important thing, we have to support one another. No matter what's going on, we right. definitely got to keep supporting one another. And that's one thing I try to do is, like, I was one of those people that, like, I came in as a number one player. Everybody was like, well, he think he's better than everybody. So I didn't really want to come off mm-hmm. as talking as much or just being laid back. I just led by example. But now you have opportunity where, as a fashion athlete, I have opportunity to use my platform to go out there and speak and talk about what I believe in and what I think is right. And I think that's what I've been doing. Cool. And then take me to, through, like, how the John Wall, you know, Family Foundation came into fruition and, then, you know, impact on the D.C. community. Uh, I mean, most importantly, you know, like my first year, first year and a half, I kind of was just, like I said, laid back, chilling to myself, just trying to figure out how this whole NBA thing goes. You know what I mean? Coming from being the number one player in high school to going to Kentucky, losing the Elite Eight, then being the number one player to get drafted, first player from Kentucky, and then going into D.C., I'm like, man, it's all hitting me at one time. I'm only 19 years right. old. So um, now I started my – and then, you know what I mean, just focus on improving. I mean, I just said, you know what, man, I feel like I want to touch people um, God gave me opportunity to play the game I love on the highest level. I'm fortunate mm-hmm. enough to help people out w- that I can. And um, my foundation just got it going for them, just me and my team just coming together and coming up with ideas. And I think the most important thing for us with my foundation is we focus on improving and uplifting uh, lives of families, challenging situations, and having an impact on young minority males. You know what I mean? D.C. is important because I'm there for 10 years in my hometown in North Carolina where I don't want to forget because – I know how much a lot of those young kids believe they can't make it out of a bad area or a bad situation, but mm-hmm. I just want everybody to understand I, I come from the same background of Section 8 and all that, and I realized I found a way to make it. You know what I mean? And it's never going to be tough times. We're all going to have ups and downs between it, but, you know I mean, just keep your mind focused, listen to your parents. And uh, I had it even rough, and some people probably had it worse than me. And my dad passed when I was nine. I was in jail most of my life. So right. I seen my mom. They just passed away seven, eight months ago. I just seen my mom sacrifice of working three to four jobs to make sure we had lights of food on our table. So when I got cut from a basketball team at like 15, I was like, you know, this is what I'm locked in on. Yeah. So then yeah. recently you had like a, a fundraiser raising funds for like rental assistance to that DC community. So how was that uh, yeah. experience? It was dope, man. You know what I mean? Just sitting back talking with my team and I have great assistants and great people on my team. Mm-hmm. Um, we come up with the idea, you know, I, mean, I give a lot of assist on the court and I love to give a lot of assist in the community. I mean, yeah. and the most important thing with me is I think a lot of people get their money, but the most important thing is give me your time. Like, let these people feel you, let these people touch you, know that you're normal mm-hmm. just like they are. Um, so, you know, I mean, we just completed my 30 day uh, fundraising campaign that we called it 202 Assist. And uh, we raised over half a, mi- half a million dollars um, for families in Ward 8 who um, have been hit with a hard times like everybody else have during this uh, pandemic, but they have yeah. been hit a lot worse. And um, I know I see a lot of those. Uh, moms and dads, like I said, sacrifice so much to try to make things work. And they they get overlooked over there. Like, people overlook them like they're not part of D.C. And they don't have nothing going on. But I watch some of these parents and watch them go to work and try to be social workers and do all this, what's going on. I was like, you know what I mean? It's an opportunity for me to help these people. And why not try to help and take one burden off their back? Like, okay, your rent's paid for for the next couple months. And just worry about getting food on the table and making sure your kids can get ready for school or whatever they have to. That was my main focus with COVID-19 going on. Mm-hmm. So that's the last thing that we have did in D.C. And um, it was dope, man, to see how, many, see how much people supported me and gave donations and things like that. So, yeah. like I said, uh, it, anybody that gave a donation, even reposted it or retweeted it for me was dope because it meant a lot. And I just wanted these people to understand that nobody forgot about them. And they're going through things just like we are in this world at the same time. Yeah, I think it's especially important that like you mentioned, like, being personable and giving your time. Because it's great to, like, donate money as well, but for people to be able to, like, see you and, like, yes. have that experience of being around you, that's something, like, you know, they won't forget. And, you yeah, know, fact, uh, for sure. Yeah. And then here at Finish Line, you know, we've seen the work, super proud of what you're doing, and, you know, we want to be part of uh, the give back that you're doing as well. So, you know, let me get the checkbook real quick. <laughs> and we want to make a nice donation. So we got the the big checks, literally. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, so we want to donate 20000 straight to uh, the John Wall Family Foundation. 
um, 20 bands, you know, we see the work that you're doing. And for us, we want to be like uh, super transparent as far as like where the money is going based on like, you know, everything going on within the uh, U.S., where the money is going, you know, people see that it's directly affecting people versus like donating somewhere and no one knows where it goes. So, oh, yeah, I'm that's that, donating 20,000. Appreciate it a lot. And uh, thanks, Finish Line. Thank you. Oh, and that, um, that's dope. You know what I mean? That's dope anyway, because like I look at uh, when I did my tour to assist, um, I was just like, you know, man, um, we wanted to make sure the right people got it. You know what I mean? Because we didn't want people mm -hmm. to donate. And give things and and the people that really need it and that's we doing it, who we're doing it for didn't get it so we made sure we did the right thing about that we made sure it went the right way and I definitely want to thank you for that and um I just wanted to speak on social justice you know what I mean like yeah. what, what's going on right now you know what I mean we happy to have basketball back we understand what's going on you know what I mean but we can't lose the focus on the bigger picture you know what I mean our bigger message is that we want change and change must happen you know what I mean we right. definitely want justice. Uh, for Breonna Taylor. You know what I mean, we understand what's going on and what she's been through and what her family going through. And uh, I played basketball in Kentucky. You know what I mean? She's from Louisville. And um, we definitely want to get justice for her and her family because we don't want them to think we forgot about it. I think those officers need to get arrested and get charged mm -hmm. for what happened. And, uh, you know what I mean, a lot of people are speaking on that. Black lives still matter. And every day it does it does matter. You know I mean, we walk out there yeah. and wake up as a black, black person. We know how tough it is to survive in this world. You know I mean, seeing our right. parents go through it and, now we would never thought that we would go through this. You know, I mean, I'm about to be 30 this year. I never thought that I would be dealing with one of the, the difficult times ever in life. I think anybody mm -hmm. we talk about, we say 2020 is probably the worst year we ever experienced. Right. With Kobe passing and the COVID-19 and David Stern and, all, and Pop smoking, all these guys. Right. But uh, we mm -hmm. just want to know, understand that social justice means something. Black Lives Matter. And we can't never let that fall out. And we want to get just for Breonna Taylor. So. Keep supporting that, and you know, I mean, people got to keep speaking on it, standing on it. Right, you can't let it get forgotten. Definitely justice for Brianna. Uh, yeah, and just like you know, it's not like a a trend. You know, this is real. You yeah, know, you can't just you can't just not be black. It's just it's just the reality. So facts. It's, yeah. it's it's the truth, man. I mean, it's a lot easier said than done, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like I said in my one of my other interviews before, like the the most important thing, you know, what I mean, I try to tell people is. They all say the president votes matters. Yes, that's a big that's a big matter. But we also got to yeah. vote inside our communities. You know what I mean? Inside our states. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where it really starts. At, you know what I mean? Who we want to be right. our mayor and things like that. Yeah, the local politicians the biggest key. Yeah, right? I know, like, if we don't worry about that, that's not dope. And you know I mean, along with me and my teammates in the midst, you know what I mean? We're excited that we bring awareness to important things like this. And right. voting, most importantly, and um, you know what I mean? With our team, you know, we got to – with our team and our partnership with our organization – we came out with the thing we all when we all vote to help get a message out. You know what I mean? That's what we stand for. When we all sure. vote, just go out there. You know, we have a message, understand that and you know, I mean we know we have difficult times going on with the president now, but mm -hmm. our local politicians is the key. Get that part done and then we can worry about what goes on with the officers and the judges and all that in our community. So that's the most important factor. Absolutely. All right, cool. You know, appreciate the time. I'm sure you got, you know, other things to do as you prepare to come back next season. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll hit you. I'll make sure this 20,000 gets right to the foundation. And, um, yeah, appreciate the time. I right, appreciate it, bro. We definitely get up for our birthdays. We Virgo, so you know how it goes. Oh, yes, sir. You know, I'm working on that, too. I'm getting, I'm getting the numbers. All right, bet, bro. Hit me. Yeah. All right. All right.